cafe anyway. Mike's Daily Podcast. FF episode 962. Hello, it's Mike Matthews broadcasting from Pod Castro Valleyton and Cafe Anyway here at the last place on earth. Today, the return of the much loved news feature Wow Shuts Wow, where we look at some interesting recent space news stories. Space, it isn't just outside of our uh, atmosphere anymore. Plus, we hear from Shelly Schuhart, Mike's Daily Podcast, Floyd the Floor Man. John Deere, the engineer, and uh, any more Mike's daily podcast atmosphere thing. I, I've just accepted some people will never be on Facebook, and quite frankly, I am happy they are marching to their own drum and symphony. So when I see one of them join FB, I'm very surprised, and part of me wonders. If Mark Zuckerberg has Mike's Daily Podcast Edged a little bit closer to world domination Yes That sounds a little paranoid Mike's I should post something about that Daily Now I wonder if I Podcast Should join Snapchat Yeah I think if I do For my age That classifies as creepy But there you go People are joining the Facebook now, the other people that for years were like, no, I don't want Mark Zuckerberg to have my information. No, I don't want to do it. Now, it's like they have decided, I'm going to join. I'm going to be p- become part of the hive. And, and that's what, you know what, I'm happy this person has joined because she posts pictures about her family and stuff. And before, she would have to do a group message. And what's another word for group message? Uh, Prison. Mobile phone prison. Because all of a sudden people are replying and you're getting all these texts on your phone. And if you're like my phone, you have the little sound effect go off whenever you you get a text. And it's like uh, bing bing or tweet or whatever fantastic sound effect you've decided upon. Oh, speaking of sound effects, look who just walked in. Go ahead and say something. Hello, Mike Matthews. I'm afraid to say something. I'm like so shy. No, you're not. Mike Matthews, I reluctantly joined Facebook years ago. And I realized that when I post something, everybody likes it. That's true. You will get more comments and more likes on your posts if you are a female, B, uh, posting a picture of your kids... Or of your cute dog Or of your cute something Maybe it's a picture of you And your husband-to-be Or your your fiancé Or you just got married These things are the ones That get the billions of likes And the billions of of comments below And sure, that's fine That's good I'd rather it be that Than someone going Donald Trump for president Oh, everybody else sucks Guns I mean, that's fine You know, you can post that But the thing is, the, the great way to get around what Facebook does with its whole popularity contest thing, when you log on to Facebook, the first thing you see in, in, in the posts of, of what other people are posting is the most popular, unless you switch it to newsfeed, which is what I always do immediately. And it used to be people liked Twitter because that's how Twitter was. It wasn't a popularity contest, but now that Twitter does this thing while you're away, and you see the most popular thing. Now, Instagram, as far as I can tell, isn't doing that yet. Instagram is basically you're seeing whatever anybody is posting at that moment. So that's what. Mike Matthews, you know an awful lot about that stuff. I don't care about it. You don't? No, all I care about is that we have world peace. And that I stay warm because it's getting cold lately. It is. It's... The temperature has dropped But I find it invigorating This time of year The little chill On the back of my neck Because it's getting cold And the The crispness In the air The crispness And I get And I get all invigorated And like yes Yes fall Yes cold Jacket sweater Wow You get a little too excited 
Uh, maybe. But d- don't judge me. Oh, and coffee tastes better in the in this time of year. Cause coffee during the summer, eh. But this this time of year, it warms you up. It smells good. It's it's much more. If I were a, a a reluctant coffee drinker, this would be the time of year I would get back into drinking it. Oh, look who else just walked in. Oh, Mike, this is Floyd the Floorman. And this is John Deere, the engineer. Mike, what are you doing? I'm hitting F8, so I remember where you to put the door sound effect. All right. Well, we were talking to you. That was very rude. Sorry. Yes, I believe that Mark Zuckerberg. Every time someone joins Facebook, he gets a wings. I was making a joke about It's a Wonderful Life. Have you seen that movie? Yeah, it's been a long time. You know, it seems like people, when we use movies as, as references, some people, they just see a gazillion movies. And they're referencing movies that I maybe have should have seen. And then I don't know what they're talking about. And they're like, oh, you haven't seen that movie? you got to see that movie, man. Best movie ever, Ant-Man. got to see Ant-Man. It's the best movie. Uh, no, I have not seen Ant-Man yet. What? Best movie ever! I just... No. My kids can go see Ant-Man. It's the best movie ever. I, I've heard that before, Floyd. Thank you. And coffee's delicious! Thank you, Floyd. Just don't spill it on the floor, because I'll have to clean it up, because I'm Floyd the Floor Man! Excellent. So today, we are going to take a look at space... The final frontier and go where no one has gone before. See, I took the Patrick Stewart version, not the William Shatner. William Shatner was, I guess he was uh, sexist, so he had said, Where no man has gone before. That's a Star Trek joke. Mike, that was not a funny Star Trek joke, even for me, a Trekkie. Well, then, uh, let's just say it was some interesting. Space stories, including something that just happened last evening. I'll get to that and remind you that we have the website, mikesdailypodcast.com, where you can see, if you have often wondered, oh, I wonder what these characters look like. They've all been represented in cartoon form on the website, and you can see them all. Plus, I have many fantastic podcast pictures of, oh, all sorts of scenery and things. There's a few selfies, but I keep the selfies to a minimum. Because in society, in the world, minimums are at a maximum with the selfies, if that made any sense. And then there is also where you can listen to us, all the places where you can listen to us. You can find that at mikesdailypodcast.com. If you want to email me, we read your comments in the section, emails from email and your common, not so comments. That is uh, the links to do all that can be found at mikesdailypodcast.com. And as well as if you want to help us out and you shop on Amazon, if you're about to shop on Amazon right now, stop and click on MikeSaleyPodcast.com and then click on that little thing on the side that says Amazon and you can purchase something and we get a little bit from that. It's wonderful. And then there's also the, if you want to become an inglorious Mike Staley podcaster and help us out through PayPal and have a greeting from all the Cafe Anyway characters, go to MikeSaleyPodcast.com for that. And finally, the uh, podcast picture and all my past interviews and the blog are at, at mikesdailypodcast.com. Last show, we had talked about the whole thing. I don't, it was really early. Oh, Kevin stopped by. We talked about beer. That was good because he is quite knowledgeable about beer. He had, I don't know if I mentioned it, he had this uh, Tornado t shirt on, which is a fist holding a, a, a beer in its hand. And he, you see this sort of emblem everywhere now but it looked quite cool I like beer I'm not I'm not gonna drink I'm, I'm at the point in my life where I only drink two beer a night and I don't drink the same beer I'll like mix it up if I'm at a beer place I won't go oh it's only Guinness for me only Coors it I'll make see you know kinda I like to change my tongue appreciates it and, and we also heard of course last show the finale of the Bobbleheads interview. Next show, in fact, we will be speaking to the singer, songwriter, and country musician Madeline Victoria, a young gal from Texas, who is quite talented and lovely. Did I mention she's talented? Yes. And so we'll do that. But first, let's get into the news segment, Wow Shits Wow, 
named after what when I tell my mom something interesting she's German so she says to me wow Schutz wow because she calls me Schutz because I'm her son it's weird that connection that she and I have her being my mom and all wow Schutz wow catch a falling star and put it in your pocket never Perry freaking Como my grandma's favorite singer yes there was something uh, a falling star or something in the sky a mysterious light that rocketed across the Southern California sky last night. This, according to the Washington Post, sparking fears of nuclear war or an incoming meteor or an alien invasion even. It was actually an unarmed missile test fired by a Navy submarine. Okay, that's the end of the story. No, 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 wait, there's more. A Navy spokesperson said that the projectile was fired from a ballistic missile submarine known as the USS Kentucky as part of an ongoing series of tests to ensure the reliability of the weaponry. Apparently, uh, it was unarmed. And uh, these exercises are classified. So that's why no one knew about it before the launch begins. It was conducted in the Pacific Test Range, a large area northwest of L.A. that the Navy uses to test fire Tomahawk and standard cruise missiles, of course, in the Pacific Ocean. Uh, That's kind of close to where I used to live in Ventura County, California, and we'd see some weird stuff. And and San Fernando Valley, all there near L.A., I'd see strange things like that. The lack of information about the streaking light fired up social media which is something that, of course, I did not have when I was a kid. And people would just be like saying to each other, what's that in the sky? Oh, and then someone would just say, aliens or a test missile or something. We just, we had common sense back then, so we knew it wasn't aliens. Anyway, uh, streaking, this fired up social media, this streaking light, and led countless people to turn their smartphones towards the sky. On Twitter, users created hashtags such as hashtag UFO and hashtag Comet and hashtag UFO as they joked about the light and speculated about its origin and accused the government of a cover-up. In addition to posting images and video of the object online, witnesses flooded local law enforcement agencies with phone calls. At first, it, liked, it, it looked like a gold shooting star, someone told CNN. It went from gold and small burning for a few minutes and turned into this blue spotlight like at an event held at night not like shooting out at but a white bright light that sentence hard to read for some reason it called to mind uh, people were were reminiscing about that strange event that took place uh, during World War II where there was something in the sky above L.A. And there was, a, like, one picture took it, had taken that was printed in the paper. And it looks, it looks like there was a UFO above L.A. Or just the lights are weird, the way they're shining. Maybe it created an effect that looked like a big UFO. But that uh, can be found online. Um, and also, uh, this person went on to say the... Torrid meteors would be coming from the east, and this light came from the west. We also like, we also could be more likely to see meteors about midnight, and the flash came near sunset. The military airspace to the west of LAX will be active for one week, creating traffic route limitations and requiring LAX to temporarily deviate from over ocean operations. The next test is, uh, or the tests are to continue until November twelfth. Twinkle, twinkle, lucky star. That, of course, is Meryl. Hey. And I can imagine you as you are flying in space and you see those, those lucky, twinkle, twinkle, lucky stars all about you. And, and, and you would go and you'd say, hey, I found out about this job because Mike told me on Mike's Daily Podcast at Washer 12. Well... I got this from Smithsonian.com, but if you have ever dreamed of piloting a rocket into deep space, this is your opportunity. This week, NASA has announced that it's looking to recruit new astronauts. With a little luck, you could be one of the lucky few that makes it into space. Over the last month, NASA announced plans for several new missions into deep space and to Mars. This will be the first time humans have traveled further than low Earth orbit since the Apollo 17 moon mission. 
all the way back in 1972. NASA needs new recruits. The NASA administrator, Charles Bolden, said, This next group of American space explorers will inspire the Mars generation to reach for new heights and help us realize the goal of putting boot prints on the red planet. Oh, yeah, and people are interested in it, like that uh, Matt Damon movie lately that's been so big, The Martian, that's been topping the box office for weeks now. These new astronauts will have the chance to advance critical science and research aboard the International Space Station and help push the boundaries of technology in the proving ground of deep space. Here's the good news. There are far fewer strict requirements for becoming an astronaut than it may seem. At the minimum, NASA requires candidates to have a bachelor's degree in a field like engineering, math, biology, or physics, three or more years of related experience, and the ability to pass the official astronaut physical. But just meeting the minimum requirements isn't likely enough to get you there. To stand out from the crowd, you'll probably want to beef up your resume with a couple of small things, like an advanced degree or two, and at least 1,000 hours of piloting experience in a jet. There have only been 300 est- astronauts in the history of American space. Bad tongue. Bad tongue. I'm admonishing my tongue. S- excuse me. Uh, there have been, let's say that again, 300 astronauts in the history of American spaceflight. And the last time NASA put out an open call for astronaut applications was back in 2011. They only chose eight finalists out of a pool of over 6,000 applicants. But if you do apply and become one of the lucky few accepted into NASA, and for many people that's probably a big but, you could have the much-anticipated opportunity to set foot on the dusty red planet. Hmm... Take us out, Merle. Twinkle, twinkle, lucky star. Can you send me love from where you are? As we go outside a cafe anyway, where we bring you Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcastro Valley. And here's today's podcast picture. And the picture was taken just last Thursday. I went with Baz the Boxer. To Shadow Cliffs, which is in Pleasanton. It's this old quarry that's full of water now, big lake. And it's a beautiful park, big open space. You can uh, let your dog off leash, walk around. Although somebody did recently post on Facebook that there were, I guess this person was not walking a dog and ran into some people that were walking dogs. And one of the dogs went up and bit this guy. And so he got this nasty bite, posted it on Facebook and said... Uh, He got, like, just a real quick blurry picture of the other person that owned the dog that bit him. And it was like, kid, you got to help me track down this guy because I don't know if this dog had rabies. And, yeah, so it was kind of scary. Don't know what became of that. But another good use to be on Facebook, to be a Facebook member, you can help to to solve who it is that's uh, bitten you. And then that picture is of the wonderful Shadow Cliffs area. There's this old... A tree that I be- it looks to me like a dried up dead pear tree with the pears still in the tree. I don't know what it is exactly, but anyway, Basil is sniffing it. And you can see that picture now at mikesdailypodcast.com. Mike Matthews, I love these pictures that you take of scenery because I never go anywhere. I just stay here at Cafe anyway all the time and I don't have a life. So these pictures help you have a life. Exactly, Mike Matthews. Wonderful. I'm glad I can help. Me too. All right. Well, next show, uh, Madeline Victoria. Great music from her. Uh, We'll also get a visit from Benita, the disgruntled fiddle player, and the brewmaster. And yes, Haley might even possibly pop by. So that'll be next show. Thank you so much for listening. Enjoy the rest of your chilly autumn day if you are listening to us in the autumn. In, in which case this show has been extremely timely and beneficial to you and I bet you're so happy yay Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews his podcast is super easy to find download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com email Mike now 
at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.